AMD liked its RX 7900 GRE so much that it's launching it two times. The second time is now, and this time it's launching to the rest of the world. GRE stands for Golden Rabbit Edition. This is a designation that AMD assigns to its China-only launches. And the 7900 GRE, it, it was focused on China. It got some light distribution around the world. And now they're bringing it to the US market, the rest of Europe, and everywhere else. So uh, places that did not have this card before will now have it in first party supply rather than having to import it. And the official price is $550 US. That puts it right around where a 4070 is and just below the 4070 Super for competition from NVIDIA. And then for AMD's alternatives, the closest is the 7800 XT. And then up another class, you got the 7900 XT, which these days is around 700 to 730 bucks. So that's come down too. We originally bought the 7900 GRE last year when it came out, but it just didn't have a wide enough launch. And we never got around to reviewing that one despite buying it and importing it. Uh, but we're back with this one. And one of the differences we noticed is that for this 7900 GRE launch, the board partners like Sapphire for this one and PowerColor, all the others, have boosted the clocks a little bit in ways that might be more meaningful or noticeable than you typically see versus the reference model that shipped last year. So uh, we should see different performance here than we would have seen with the reference anyway. And the 7900 GRE's presence now gives AMD two similarly priced options in the same price category where NVIDIA has two similarly priced options. So uh, the, the battle is getting heated in this $500 plus or minus range. And even still, the companies are continually dropping prices very tiny amounts. You recently saw the 4070 Super fall another 10 bucks or so. Uh, all right, so Intel Arc, for them, they're absent in this category. We just did a revisit of Arc. Stops at the $300 mark, though. So we'll leave that in its own video. You can check that out if you want to learn how they're doing in 2024, because we just did a full revisit on it. But let's get started with the 7900 GRE. We brought you this video with our new ultra-comfortable tri-blend medium-weight hoodies in stock and shipping now on store.gamersnexus.net. The whole GN team has been using these for more than a year now, and we love them, so we decided to make more for the store. These are warm, super comfortable hoodies with a GN component teardown logo on the back, with tiny details like MOSFETs, inductors, VRM components, PCIe slots, and more designed into the print. These zip hoodies help directly fund our independent testing and get you something useful in return, and comfortable. Head over to store.gamersaccess.net to grab one and support us today. So one's a little weird today just because the card already exists, so it's not a new product. And uh, that means some of you might already be familiar with it. But the things to know, uh, other than that $550 pricing being official now, the other uh, new additions to this are that there are more partner models than the original launch. So there's going to be more options out there. Some of them will be more relevantly boosted than others. And then additionally, uh, this may start displacing the 7800 XT in some ways, wouldn't be surprised if we saw a price drop for the 7800 XT alongside the 7700 XT, but you can find our baseline thoughts on the 78 XT in that review. It hasn't changed too much the price since more or less where it was originally. Uh, but to get everyone back up to speed, let's go over some specs. The RX 7900 GRE has 80 compute units, which is cut down from the 84 on the 7900 XT and boosted from 60 on the 7800 XT. So a huge difference between the 78 XT and the 7900 GRE in this capacity. The gap between the 7800 XT and 7900 GRE will primarily emerge in situations where the compute workload is higher, although the 7900 GRE's clocks are lower than the 7800 XT by pure spec sheet. Partner models, as usual, can boost this higher to try and make up for that difference. TDP is about the same between these cards, hence the lower power budget available for boosting while carrying more CUs than the 7800 XT. Memory bandwidth is also superior on the 7800 XT as a result of the higher memory clocks. And as for the 7900 XT, one of its biggest advantages here is just the hugely increased memory bandwidth. And as usual, it helped do a quick pricing update as well for the 7900 GRE and its closest competition. The RX 7900 GRE should be $550 when it hits retailers worldwide this time. The 7900 XT has finally fallen in price, again, and seems to be stable at around $730 to $750, but we've seen some options occasionally hit $700. At $700, it's definitely becoming a good overall value. And you can check out our 7900 XT revisit from last year for more on that. It was a similar price at that point too. But even that is $150 more expensive than the base 7900 GRE price. So they're different price classes. 
The 7800 XT has an MSRP of $500 and currently has units from $490 to $500 with regular availability. That'll be the closest priced alternative to the 7900 GRE at $50 cheaper. Nvidia's closest priced competitors would be the 4070 Super at the upper end at $590 and up, and decent cards could be had regularly at $600. The RTX 4070 non-super wasn't discontinued and has been kept at around $550 officially, but we saw a few models now down at around $525 to $540 on Newegg. As for the third player in the market, Intel's closest card would be the ARC A770 at $290 to $300. This is a distant price class and isn't really competition for someone seeking to spend in the $500 plus range, but check our recent ARC revisit if you want to see our thoughts on it. So it's gonna be really simple today. Again, it's, it's an existing product. We've been pushing out a ton of GPU reviews and benchmarks lately. So we're adding this to the tables and we're gonna just run through it really quickly. Let's get into the benchmarks. In Resident Evil 4 at 1080p, the RX 7900 GRE landed at 223 FPS average, which has it between the 4070 Super and the 6950 XT. The 6950 XT was about 600 bucks when we last saw it available new, and the 4070 Super is currently 590 to $600. So the GRE ends up cheaper here, while outperforming the Super by 3.1%. It's not likely to be noticeable, but it is a real advantage, and the price is noticeable. That means the 4070 Ti Super leads by 13%, with the 7900 XT 17% ahead of the 7900 GRE. Lower down the stack, the 6800 XT remains an impressive performer and sits just below the 4070 Super, with the 78 XT at 198 FPS average, giving the 7900 GRE a 13% lead. At 1440p, the 7900 GRE's 157 FPS average has it 10% ahead of the 4070 Super, a significant boost from its 1080p lead of just 3.1%. Going up to the 7900 XT would get you about 17% more performance for that price hike, and dropping down to the 7800 XT, we see an advantage form for the GRE of 15%. Other notables include the 6950 XT, which is about equal to the 7900 GRE, and the original 4070 Ti non-super, also about equal. Uplift over something older, like the 2070 at 58 FPS average, would yield in this instance a 170% improvement to the GRE. At 4K, the RX 7900 GRE ran at 82 FPS average and landed between the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Ti Meh edition, the latter of which was about tied with the 6950 XT as well. The 7900 GRE now leads the 4070 Super by an impressive 15.6%, and that's why we tested all three of these resolutions. As we've seen in the past, NVIDIA's new non-flagship 40 series cards struggle to keep scaling as the resolution increases. AMD has a disproportionate advantage against the 4070 Super here. Buying upwards to the 7900 XT would give you a boost of 19% with these settings. Worth considering, but the price hike is definitely noticeable. Rainbow Six Siege is up now. First at 4K, the 7900 GRE ran at about 154 FPS average. That's the same as the 4070 Super, and it's behind the 3080 Ti. The 7900 XT leads the 7900 GRE by about 23% here. A noteworthy advantage attached to a noteworthy price increase again, and it's about 27 to 30% more expensive. Against the 7800 XT, the 7900 GRE leads by 6.3%, or in terms of the absolute, it's 9 FPS average. The 7900 GRE falls exactly where you'd expect it. It's between the 7900 XT and the 7800 XT, but in this case, it's more similar to the 78 than the 79 XT. Moving to 1440p, the 7900 GRE runs about 7% ahead of the 4070 Super. The 7900 XT's lead over the 7900 GRE this time is about 14%. Generally speaking, the 7900 XT starts to produce a meaningful uplift here, with the 4070 Ti Super not particularly meaningfully different in this title. However, that changes in ray tracing later. As an upgrade, the 7900 GRE produces an appreciable improvement over the last gen 3070, but the 3070 is still perfectly fine, and if you have it, we think you should just stick with it. Uh, for at least another generation, but depends on if you're happy with it. The 7900 GRE also appreciably improves over AMD's last gen 6700 XT. At 1080p, the 7900 GRE is about tied with the 6950 XT again. It leads the 4070 Super marginally, and it leads the 7800 XT by just 4.6%. Overall, though, this plays pretty well at 1080p on just about anything within the last few generations. Dying Light 2 is up now at 4K. The 7900 GRE ran at 58 FPS average here, which has it just barely hitting the minimum that that most people probably target for frame rate. Settings adjustments would fully accommodate 60 FPS though, and that result has it about equal to the 4070 Ti and just ahead of the 4070 Super. However, realistically, all three of these devices produce about the same experience. Increasing your budget to the 7900 XT levels would improve frame rate by 18%, 
the 4070 Ti Super would yield a similar uplift. And against the 7800 XT, the 7900 GRE yields a 13% benefit. So if you need to save some money, it's still an option, but we have our thoughts on the 7800 XT. You can see it in our previous review. It's almost perfectly in between the 7900 XT and the 7800 XT, though. It's predictable. At 1440p, the RX 7900 GRE's 118 FPS average performance has it about equal to the 3080 Ti or the 4070 Ti, with the 6950 XT slightly leading. The 7900 XT's lead is only 14% here, and the 7800 XT also happens to allow the 7900 GRE a 14% lead. So it is planted perfectly in the middle. As for the 4070 Super, the lead is about 6%, while the price is lower for the GRE. At 1080p, the 7900 GRE's lead over the 4070 Super evaporates as the two cards converge to functional equivalents. The 7900 XT and the 7800 XT position themselves equidistant from the 7900 GRE, with the superior card in each of those scenarios leading by about 12 to 14%. We're moving on to Final Fantasy XIV now. At 4K, the 7900 GRE runs at 98 FPS average and produces the same overall experience as the 6800 XT and the 3080. The 4070 Super leads this time by now 7%. The GRE is less centered between its AMD peers at this time. The 7900 XT leads by a noteworthy 27%, with the 78 XT getting led by about 13%. NVIDIA's alternatives include, again, the 4070 Super, with the 4070 Ti Super ranking a little ahead of the 7900 XT. Upgrades from something like a 2060 or a 2070 class card would be meaningful, but anything more modern can wait another generation or two. At 1440p, the 7800 XT begins running into overhead in this particular game, as we've talked about a lot before. That extends to 1080p as well. The 7900 GRE therefore lands closer to it than when outside of these conditions, although the GRE still fully scales on its own. So its lead over the 7800 XT remains about 10% here, and the 4070 Super outperforms the GRE here. They swap positions depending on the game. GTA 5 at 4K is one of the charts we keep around for generational comparison data because the results don't really ever change for us. You can see the 5700 XT here as a great example of that. The result would be the same today. The 7900 GRE runs at about 106 FPS average, which has it leading the 4070 by a slight 3.7%. The 4070 Super leads again in this one at 118 FPS average and establishing an 11% uplift. The 7900 XT has another one of its stronger leads in this particular test, with the 4K resolution contributing to that, and that puts it up at 24% advantage over the GRE, closer to parity with the price increase. Against the 7800 XT, the 700 GRE is relatively close this time. It's an 8% lead now. And as for the 5700 XT, the 7900 GRE improves over the former flagship by 94%. It's about two times the frame rate. For a reminder to our recent discussion with Intel Arc, Arc struggles with our test settings in this game. Disabling MSAA for Arc improves its performance disproportionately from what we would see as an impact to AMD or NVIDIA with the same change. Starfield is up now. This is a title that AMD tends to do well with. At 4K, the 700 GRE runs at about 60 FPS average. Those are expected and consistent. The 4070 Super produced a 53 FPS result, giving the 700 GRE a 9% lead this time. The 7800 XT is closer to the 4070 Super than the GRE, with the GRE holding a 13% lead. That's similar to what we've seen elsewhere, and the same is true for the 7900 XT, which keeps its 19% lead over the GRE. At 1440p, the 7900 GRE's 91 FPS average has it just behind the 4070 Ti and the Ti Super, and it leads the 4070 Super by 5%, reduced from 9% at 4K. This continues Nvidia's trend of sometimes suffering disproportionately at higher resolutions, like 4K. Otherwise, the lineup remains comparable to before. We added the 2080 to this chart, so you've got an extra data point you can use if you have that card. Now we're moving on to ray tracing benchmarks. Some of these games are the same games, but with RT and settings changes, so the numbers can't be transplanted between the charts. Cyberpunk is our heaviest RT workload. We'll start there. We've also shown that AMD falls increasingly behind as the RT load in this game increases. This is the lightest of the two settings we test first, meaning it's representing a balanced option between the two vendors. Ultra is after this, and it's what allows NVIDIA to pull wildly ahead. At 1080p medium RT, the 7900 GRE runs at about 57 FPS average, giving the 7900 XT a 14% lead and leading the 7800 XT by 13%, so that's similar. NVIDIA is where it gets interesting. The 4070 Super now leads the GRE by a remarkable 34%. If you really care about super heavy ray tracing, especially in Cyberpunk or games like Dying Light, ones that behave the same way, then NVIDIA still maintains the advantage. But in lighter RT games coming up, it evens out. It really just depends on the load. Arc actually does extremely well in Cyberpunk with RT, roughly equating the 4060 with the much cheaper A770 GPU. 
This is due to architectural choices that the Intel team made. Unfortunately, since the stack stops at the A770, they don't have anything up at the 7900 GRE levels of competition. At 1080p and with Ultra RT settings, the 7900 GRE falls to 40 FPS average, this time leading the 7800 XT by 17%, and with the 7800 XT about 12% ahead of the GRE. But this is exactly what we were talking about. Even the 4070 non-super is outperforming the 7900 XTX here. That's insane. And the 4070 Super now benefits from an overwhelming advantage of 63% over the 7900 GRE. It's not even close anymore. That's what those ultra settings do. Resident Evil 4 is way, way kinder to the AMD stack. This is more representative of lighter weight RT workloads, and we're using FSR quality on all devices here. The RX 7900 GRE's 91 FPS average result has it about equal with the 4070 Ti and the 6950 XT, producing the same experience. The 7900 XT leads the 7900 GRE by 17% in this one, with the 7800 XT's 83 FPS average giving a 10% lead to the GRE. Notably, the GRE leads the 4070 Super this time around, which itself is about tied with the 7800 XT. At 1440p, the GRE ran at 137 FPS average and fell behind the 4070 Super, although they're less than 3% apart. Otherwise, everything else is predictable on the AMD side. The 7900 XT and the 7800 XT remain on the flanks, and on the NVIDIA side, AMD is more competitive here than previously. That's especially true now that the 7900 XT has dropped and held its cheaper price. At 1080p, the 4070 Super continues its upward trajectory and gains an 8% advantage over the GRE. As we've seen elsewhere, the AMD part is benefited by the higher resolution here, while NVIDIA benefits from the lower resolution. In Dying Light 2 with ray tracing, we're back to a performance disparity closer to the Cyberpunk medium results. Starting with 1080p, the 4070 Super's 119 FPS average leads the 7900 GRE by a comparatively staggering 24%, for the times AMD led this card in rasterization, NVIDIA is definitely trying to make it up in some of these RT loads. Positioning against the 7800 XT is the same as before, with the GRE about 14% better. At 1440p, the 7900 GRE runs about 65 FPS average. It's still capable of this game with RT when using FSR quality like this. The 4070 Super keeps its 24% lead here. The 7900 XT and 7800 XT remain positionally the same as before, with the 4070 non-super ahead of the GRE now. I think we've established a pattern at this point, so that'll be enough game charts. Finally, for power consumption, this is pretty quick. The 7900 GRE that we tested measured at about 270 watts when it was under a complete workload. The 7900 XT was around 313, just for reference. The 4070 Super, which was the closest competitor in the rasterized testing, was at 222 watts. So NVIDIA definitely holds an efficiency advantage here. And then the 7900 XT with the Hellhound partner model card, that was at 330 watts. So the AMD 7900 GRE performs exactly like you would expect, especially if you already knew how it performed because it already existed. Uh, again, the, the kind of new part here is that this is, you think of this almost more like a revisit in the same way we just revisited Arc, where it's an existing product that now has some new reason it's become relevant again in the market, except this one is that it launched into our market uh, and you don't have to buy it from AliExpress and wait four weeks for it to arrive, maybe. For performance though, this card is often equidistant from the 7900 XT and the 7800 XT. It's, it very frequently sits literally in the middle, like almost perfectly. There are times that they break rank a little bit, so in some loads that are particularly memory bandwidth constrained, for example, you'll see the 7800 XT start catching up a little bit to the 7900 GRE, it never surpassed it in any of our tests, which makes sense, and because the, the compute unit difference is still massive, regardless of some of the clock differences. And then the same for the 7900 XT, it'll pull away a little bit more, upwards of 24, 27% improvement at the very, very high end over the 7900 GRE. Uh, but for the most part, if you call it, say, about 18% uplift, plus or minus, on average, drawn a line down the middle of our results uh, for the 7900 XT versus the 7900 GRE. You look against a 27 to maybe 30% price increase, depending on where you live in the world. And the, the, despite the very strong value of the 7900 XT against its closest competition from NVIDIA, the 7900 GRE still has a place uh, if you can't stretch another 150 bucks, because it's a lot of money. It's just the question is, what does this do to the 7800 XT? And for that, uh, we suspect that the these two sort of, call them, I don't know, there's not really, they're mid-range cards. It's just, it, there's been like inflation of card categories over the years where they the 7700 XT feels low end, but the price is really not. Anyway, it feels like those will 
shuffle down maybe in the nearer future 77 xt but anyway the 7900 gre trades places with the 4070 super in many of the rasterized tests that we ran so if what you care about is really not ray tracing and you're mostly going to be in rasterized scenarios then from our results you can consider them as functionally the same in most cases uh, the 7900 GRE does tend to pull ahead in a couple of these games that we looked at. And most notably, it pulls ahead at 4K uh, and other high-resolution benchmarks. At 1080p, the 4070, at least in a lot of these tests, claws back or slightly surpasses the 7900 GRE, which is just because NVIDIA's bandwidth choices they've made have really allowed it to slip in the ranks at 4K and higher resolutions, which is actually a place they used to focus on and really compete heavily in. They kind of gave that up at this price class these days. So AMD does pretty well there for scaling. It's just that NVIDIA holds a significant advantage in some of the RT workloads. So specifically, that'd be the heavy ones like Cyberpunk, uh, Dying Light 2 with RT, anything where it is really heavy on the ray tracing. Alan Wake would be another one, especially. So in those scenarios, sometimes it's just not even close. The 4070 Super, uh, really pulls ahead of the 7900 GRE. It could be 30%, even more. I think there was one instance we talked about a 60% change. So if you're going to play heavily uh, ray traced games or specifically Cyberpunk, uh, NVIDIA is probably going to give you better value for it, maybe even just better outright performance. But for games that have RT just backed off a little bit, like Resident Evil, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, those types of games where it's maybe one RT feature or very light on the overall RT load, then AMD is able to maintain rank with NVIDIA a lot better. So that's kind of it for the 700 GRE. Very simple review. We've given you all the numbers. It lands right in the middle of the other two 7000 series cards that flank it by price. And uh, that's what you'd expect. But card's not new. We do think it is, however, um, worth covering and talking about now that it's going worldwide because uh, it's going to shuffle a, a very competitive area of the market right now, which again is about that $500 range, seems to be kind of the new $300 target uh, if you compare it to several years ago where they are the most embattled. So that's it for this one. You've got the data to help make a decision and we'd really recommend you check out some of our other recent GPU videos if you want to get up to speed on even more stuff. So a couple of quick references, Intel Arc Revisit is definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it, even if just for fun to see where they are these days. And the 4070 Super Review is worth watching because it's the closest competitor to this one. You've got all the data in this review, but the latency discussion in that one might interest you. And we're going to keep pulling that testing forward. We're kind of, uh, that was the debut of it to say, hey, we're working on this, the pilot basically. And now we're working on uh, finalizing the methodology for all the latency stuff. We're going to run AMD uh, and it's 500 ish dollar cards through it as well. But we've got some of the AMD cards in the latency test for the 4070 Super Reviews. Check that out if you want to see it. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching as always. Subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab a hoodie like this one, or you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. We'll see you all next time.